It's Min from the Art of Verbal War, where people learn to excel in verbal skills. As you all know, I sometimes like to talk about and analyze controversial people from time to time, such as Bill O'Reilly or LeVar Ball, who I recently made videos about. And I like to do this just to keep things interesting around here. So in this video, I want to talk about another somewhat controversial figure, Kellyanne Conway, senior counselor and campaign manager to our dear President Trump. This was a suggestion from one of my subscribers, Zoe. So wherever you are, Zoe, thank you. Now back to Kellyanne Conway. Someone on YouTube dubbed her the best liar money can buy, which is an insult, but also quite the compliment. While I don't condone lying, I do believe there are many things you can learn from her to improve your verbal dexterity and your ability to engage in debates and verbal confrontations. This is what I believe. The world is not a black and white place, and so if you want to excel in verbal skills, you'll need to play in the gray areas once in a while. Well, and Kellyanne Conway, she's a master of playing in the gray area, if nothing else. If this were Star Wars, she wouldn't be Yoda. She'd be more like the Emperor. You may not like the emperor, but you do have to respect his power. So in this video, I'm going to show you five of Kellyanne Conway's top debate tactics that you're going to want to learn. Now let's watch some clips from a 2016 CNN interview between Allison Camerota and Kellyanne Conway. What exactly will he be releasing? His entire medical history or just the results of the last checkup? I don't know, but I'll tell you what he won't be releasing. He won't be releasing the fact that he had pneumonia for two days and lied about it. So Michigan tomorrow. In other words, we can talk about that, but let's talk about stamina and energy. Let's talk about who's actually taken the case directly to voters and who's not. So I would say this technique is her number one go-to technique, and it's one that's a must learn, and I call it offensive parallelism. Parallelism means using one word in something said by the other person and using that word in your response. So in the first example, she takes the word releasing and then uses it in her response. But she does this while also going on the offensive. So the word offensive parallelism. You see how she shifted the issue from Trump's medical history to attacking Hillary lying about her pneumonia. That's why I call it offensive parallelism. Notice how in these two examples, she doesn't merely defend she's always looking for that opportunity to go on the offensive and that's why she's so effective and you'll see this in almost every single technique I'm going to show you in this video so Kellyanne are you satisfied with the level of transparency from your candidate I am I'm very satisfied with it and you know what I'm really satisfied with that he is out there with voters every single day they expect it they deserve it I travel with him once in a while Allison the county fair in Ohio last week he and Governor Pence were together it was just astonishing to see people eight and ten deep at a county fair. Now this technique is called agreeing and amplifying, which is a very clever technique. Whenever the interviewer makes an accusation about Trump, instead of denying it, she actually agrees with the accusation and amplifies it. And in the course of amplifying it, she finds a way to turn the accusation around and go on the offensive. So in the first example, she's asked, are you satisfied with the level of transparency? So she says, yes, she agrees. I sure am. And you know what I'm most satisfied with? I'm satisfied that he's out there with voters every single day. So do you see how she's using this tactic to go on the offensive? She doesn't merely neutralize a question, but instead she finds a way to go on the offensive and make her candidate look better or the other candidate look worse. So in the course of your debates and verbal confrontations, you also want to find those opportunities within an exchange to go on the offensive. Will Donald Trump release anything from the IRS proving that he's under audit? I don't know. Why? In other words, why, why are you, are you calling him taking, a liar? Well, we're taking his word for it. Are you calling him a liar? And we're taking Hillary Clinton's word for it that she was overheated and didn't have pneumonia or that she's going to be aspirational uplifting or she's going to start talking to the press again. I mean, seriously, we're going to, we're running against a Clinton and we're going to challenge someone's veracity. If Mike Pence is saying tens of millions of dollars from Donald Trump, Shouldn't we see the evidence? Did anybody ask uh, Hillary Clinton for evidence that she was overheated and dehydrated? Is anybody asking her for evidence of why she thinks she's so precious and special that she would have the Secret Service break protocol at Ground Zero on Sunday, Allison, and take her to her daughter's apartment rather than a hospital? I mean, who are these people that there's always a different set of rules for them or always just supposed to look the other way? So in these two examples, not only is she looking for opportunities to go on the offensive, but she's always on the lookout for double standards. And she'll call that out whenever her candidate or her position is being held to a different standard. But you are talking problems. a lot about You're darn her. right, so at least we hear about her today. Transparency and trustworthiness are her two pillar problems, and she did nothing 
the whole last week. I think that's really one of the untold stories this year. It's who thinks that they've that they've earned it and they deserve it and it's their turn and darn it, it's that you better get behind me. I'm I, I've I've got I'm qualified. You know what else is a qualification for president? Integrity and transparency, especially when the press is asking you what's wrong. Now, in these two examples, do you see how she's always prepared with her own narrative and buzzwords? She's not merely out there to defend her candidate. She's out there to go on the offensive to obliterate the opposition. She uses the words transparency, trustworthiness, integrity over and over again and brings as many exchanges and questions back to these buzzwords as possible. Again, this is all about her finding ways to go on the offensive rather than just playing defense. By the end, the viewer is left thinking about whether Hillary Clinton is trustworthy and transparent instead of thinking about Trump's health or tax records. Well, Donald Trump, part of why people are calling for him to release his taxes is so that we do know how much he himself has given to charity. Will you or the campaign release exactly what that number is? And I the reason it. I ask, why would you doubt it? I doubt it because this is like badgering. In other words, I don't see it as journalism. I see it as badgering. In other words, we've had this conversation so many times on so many different networks, and yet we're not having conversation about what the middle class tax relief would actually mean for people's wage stagnation. I saw her by the van, and and but but Allison, this is what the this is what I expect from the Clinton campaign. I really don't expect it from journalists. To, we're talking about Hillary Clinton and her pneumonia, and what happened on 9/11, which we all saw with our own two eyes. And we're talking, to, and it takes us about 10 words to get to Donald Trump. I just wish that she would, she would respect the hardworking men and women in this country who she thinks a bunch of uneducated rubes coming down from the hills with no teeth and, and, and long fingernails and just, you know, they need to be schooled by this precious woman in New York at Cipriani talking to people who are laughing at Americans. Do we so these two examples illustrate when she has a difficult time answering a substantive question, she'll actually engage in an ad hominem attack against the person asking the question or the other side instead of engaging the substance of the question. So in other words, when she has a weak position, instead of trying to defend her position, she'll actually just attack the other side personally. And do you see in the second example where she talks about hardworking men and women who Hillary thinks are a bunch of uneducated rubes with long fingernails who need to be schooled by this precious woman in New York, as Cipriani, who are laughing at Americans. Do you see how she uses vivid language in her ad hominem attack? You can almost envision the scene in her head, which makes makes it that much more powerful. She doesn't just tell us that Hillary is an elitist, she actually shows it and illustrates it, which is one of the bedrock principles of excellent verbal skills, which is you want to show and not just tell. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown of Kellyanne Conway's top debate tricks. If you want to learn more about how to master the art of verbal confrontation, you'll love my upcoming course, Verbal Domination, a course on how to dominate and win verbal confrontations. For a free preview of Verbal Domination, go to artofverbalwar.com forward slash verbal domination. I'll let you know when Verbal Domination is finally available for purchase. Until next time, keep being excellent, my friends. This is Min Lu from The Art of Verbal War, and please subscribe to this YouTube channel.